Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Steve from PC Budget Solutions here, and I'm back. I have a lot of videos to do in the next week or so, so you guys are going to see a lot of content popping up, and you already saw me lift it a little bit. Ryzen 3 1200 versus i3 7100. The battle of the low $100 CPUs is here for you guys today. However, a little bit different. This is my test rig over here. I'm going to be selling this here in a little bit, but it features a GTX 1060, and I did this for one reason. That is, nobody that spends $110 or $120 on a CPU is buying a GTX 1080. Nobody does that. I get it you're trying to remove bottlenecks, but that's not what I do. I bring videos to you guys explaining this is what realism looks like. So nobody plays the game with everything turned off. So I have your MSI Afterburner, CPU-Z, GPU-Z. I have four tabs open. I have the respective launchers open, right? So that's what my testing methodology is going to be. And I'm pairing it with a graphics card that you would probably buy with one of these two chips. Now, there's going to be more videos here shortly with a 1080, an RX 550, Ryzen 5, and a G4560. That's going to take a lot of time. That's going to be dropping a little bit later on in the week. So definitely stay tuned. But are you guys ready? I don't have any answers yet, but you guys are about to find out. Is AMD going to just stick the nail in the coffin with Intel right now and beat them in every price point? I don't know but we're about to find out. So let's take a look at the setups real quick. Pretty much identical. I just swapped out the CPUs and the boards respectively. But here we have obviously the Ryzen 3 1200 Intel i3 7100. Stock speed is in voltages, stock holders, uh, decent uh, entry level boards, uh, B250 for Intel, B350 for Ryzen. Um, I use 2133 megahertz RAM. I did not overclock because Intel on this platform won't go above 2400 and I didn't think that was a fair comparison yet. That's coming down the road here. Uh, good power supply in the GTX 1060. Very simple. This is the setup we're working with, but let's dive right in and start looking at some benchmarks. Now, obviously, we're just starting out and we won't see any trends right out of the gate, but on the graphics test, you can see that they're pretty much dead even, both on graphics test one and graphics test two. Now this is Firestrike, this is the 1080p variant, not the super hard 4K or multi um, graphics cards version. And then we look at physics, PhysX and combined, and you can see Ryzen actually gets a little bit of a win here. Small, but a little bit, and we're from five to eight percent. Mind you, the Ryzen chip is 500 megahertz slower. So, first synthetic out of way, let's take a look at TimeSpy. Nearly identical results in the previous slide. On doing a graphics-based test, they're so close that I would say margin of error. About half an FPS on, at um, the first graphics test, rather, and about a little bit more, no, right around a quarter, a 0.3 uh, frames per second on graphics test two. But the CPU, also a half a frame faster, I be it at a much lower frame rate, we're looking at, you know, four or five percent difference. So next, let's take a look at superposition. This is a brand new benchmark I haven't done before for you guys, but it's looking like the exact same thing at the previous slide, except so much closer. Intel continues to technically win, but we're talking a tenth or a, a fifth of a frame per second is so close that's easily, easily margin of error. So I'm not going to, you know, take some guesses here, but it looks to be that these two chips are basically dead in a dead heat right now. Let's look at some actual games to see where we end up. So here we got Ghost Recon Wildlands, high settings, 1080p and 1440p. In both scenarios, the i3 squeaks out a really, really small win. I mean, we're talking less than 4% at four at 1440p and, and maybe not even quite 5% at 1080p. But uh, not quite margin of error, but boy, oh so close at the same time. Really, really similar to the synthetics, but this is just one game. Let's take a look at our favorite, For Honor. I don't think we can get a whole heck of a lot closer here. Again, they are in a dead heat. 
not even a full frame at 1080p and literally just over one frame at 1440p. This one I'm going to call within margin of error. Because if I ran this test five, six, seven times, I think they would average in a dead heat in this game. Not as much of a difference in Ghost Recon Wildlands, but boy, like such a small difference here. I, let, let's take a look at the old Ashes of the Singularity because I'll be honest, you know, I didn't like that benchmark, but I had to do something to get some different results here. Finally, I have a graph that doesn't look the same. So in Ashes of the Singularity, we saw roughly almost a 5 FPS difference at 1080p. So that's going to be a full 9% improvement for you know i3 over Ryzen 3. At 1440p, obviously a bit more of a bottleneck is present. So I kind of saw this coming because it's very heavy on the CPU with single thread performance. And the extra clock speed of the i3 is really going to make up a lot of ground here, which I kind of suspected. The question is, if they're at the same clock speed, which one will perform better? So you you have a 9% FPS difference, but if I increase the frequency from 3.4 to 3.9 boost, or 3.4 to 3.9 actually solid, so not just boost, but an all-around boost clock, what are the results going to look like? So that's going to be next. I don't have that slide here, but you guys stick around. It'll be upcoming shortly. But there's one more slide you guys got to take a look at, and I'll wrap it up. I don't think I ever did a slide like this. Temperatures. And I did it for one reason. It became relevant. 68 degrees Celsius on the i3 versus 52 on the Ryzen 3. Now, point out that ambient temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. This is why my conclusion is not going to be on video because it's just been too hot. I can't get good lighting. But when we go to overclock on a stock cooler at that high of an ambient temperature, we'll probably run into voltage limitations. But we really, stay tuned, we really might have an interesting battle because everybody says buy this chip and overclock it. And we're going to find out if that's actually a legitimate recommendation with a stock cooler. But let's go ahead and wrap this up. I think we learned a lot today. So who won? Technically, the i3 did win every single battle except heavy CPU tasks that weren't primarily single-threaded. Technically, it won. I'm not going to raise it in victory. I'm going to call it... I don't want to call it a dead heat because it did win. I'm going to say that the Intel did technically edge it out, the i3. But I don't think it really won because there's a lot more to do. We have to look at overclocking. You can't do that with the i3. I can boost the memory speeds up 266 megahertz, but that's all we got. And it already ran kind of hot as it is, so that may not be a, a good idea to start messing with voltages there. So in this test, the Intel i3 did win. Which to buy? Go with Ryzen. Couple reasons. So in the next video, which is the last part of the conclusion, we're going to talk about overclocking this chip. And I think that's going to change this conclusion because we should be able to overclock on a stock cooler given how much headroom we have. Also, four physical cores means more CPU throughput for things like multitasking, Cinebench, anything of that nature you're going to get a lot more throughput for. And AM4 is going to be built upon for several years down the road, whereas Coffee Lake is not going to be supported on the current Z277 B250 or Z270 B250 boards, or an H270 boards rather as well. So if you go with the i3, you're kind of stuck, and the motion goes four threads or four cores, uh, eight threads rather. So I don't really think that the i3 is a good product to buy, especially since the G4560 is available now. What's next? A couple videos we're looking at. First things first, let's overclock this Ryzen 3 chip. Everybody says, buy the lower end chip and overclock it. We're going to find out if that holds any weight. We're going to mess with memory and we're going to mess with actual CPU speed as well and see if that helps. I think it's going to help a lot, a lot, but we don't know. After that, big, big, big video dropping. We're going to be testing four CPUs and three graphics cards on all these same tests. We're talking 1080, we're talking 1060, we're talking RX 550, we're talking Ryzen 5 1600, we're talking Ryzen 3 1200, i3 7100, and the G4560. And we're going to put them all head to head because I think there's a lot to learn in that video. And a lot of people, you know, said that I should be testing it with higher end uh, GPUs. So let's learn a lot with that. But 
Thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Definitely stay tuned. There's be more content hitting the channel next week or so. But this is Steve from PC Pudger Solutions. I'll see you later on down the road.